बस्तर डिस्ट्रिक्ट छत्तीसगढ़ सेंट्रल इंडिया द हार्ट ऑफ अ हिल एंड फॉरेस्टेड एरिया दैट एक्सटेंड्स इन टू महाराष्ट्र इन द वेस्ट उड़ीसा इन द ईस्ट झारखंड इन द नॉर्थ एंड आंध्रा इन द साउथ दिस इज वे आर सॉन्ग बिगिन The old man is playing the song of Lingo Dio. Though there are regional variations, the legend of Lingo Pen is linked to the creation of mankind and is known throughout central India among its largest tribal group, the Gonds. Speaking a Dravidian tongue, the Gonds or Koi as they call themselves are among the oldest inhabitants of the subcontinent and are divided into many groups and subgroups like the Maria the Muria the Halba the Bison Horn Maria and the Raj Gonds The Gonds are distinguishable from the tribes that live among them like the Bega by their language and mythology The Gonds are dark skinned, short with rounded features and thick black hair. In the remote hills of Bastar, away from the influences of the mainstream, they wear the bare minimum. The women wear a short sari wrapped around the waist. with a long free end that goes over the shoulder and covers the upper half the men wear their hair long and are traditionally clad in a loin cloth and with another piece of cloth tied around the head it is common to see a wooden tobacco pouch dangling from the waist the youth both boys and girls take great care to groom and decorate themselves As one gets nearer to the plains and the roads traditional clothes have been replaced by shorts shirts and dhotis for men and sarees with blouses for the women There are no special birth related rituals among the Gonds. In most cases the children are not even named till the age of 3 when their physique and character starts to develop. A child is then named according to the character it has developed or if there is some characteristic that reminds its family of an ancestor. Central to the Gond way of life and the continuance of its culture is the dormitory for the youth called ghotul similar institutions have been found in tribal societies all over the world the youth both boys and girls become members of the ghotul around puberty until they get married the girls in the ghotul are known as motiari while the boys are called cheliks with bilosa and kotwar respectively as their elected heads the ghotul is like a well defined society within the larger society of the village there are strict codes of conduct and duties laid out for the members of the ghotul to follow these are designed to teach the youth gond traditions and prepare them for their responsibilities as adults Most importantly it instills a sense of community among its inmates and ensures that when they grow older they are able to live in harmony with one another and their natural environment Amen. 
The Gonds have a simple and natural attitude towards sex. Sexual congress between Cheliks and Motiaris belonging to different clans is encouraged within the Ghotul and it is because of this that the Ghotuls have come under attack from social workers and reformers coming from the mainstream. As a result, very few Ghotuls can be found in villages these days. Even where they do exist, the Gonds hesitate to talk about them. The Gonds are divided into different clans. These clans are exogamous and children are born into the clans of their father. Friendships formed in the Ghotul often lead to marriage. At the time of marriage, the groom, along with male members of the village, sets up the marriage pole in his house. This is symbolic of the establishment of a new family. These poles are carved and painted with depictions of the sun, the moon and symbols of the groom's clan. Living among nature, Gon life is directed towards raising food from the earth, either by cultivation, by gathering the fruits of the forest, or by hunting and fishing. Traditionally, Maria communities practiced a slash and burn form of agriculture, where a patch of forest was cleared and tilled for a few years, till its yield was good, after which the land was left for the forest to reclaim and the community would move on to another area. This practice was banned under British rule and today Maria villages are settled. Millets such as Kodon and Kutki are the main cultivated crops, though rice is planted where there is ample water. More than agriculture, however, it is the relationship of the Gorns to the forest that is most important. They have inherited an intimate knowledge of the forest and its seasonal cycles. This knowledge is vital for their survival even today. This settlement of Maria Gorns has migrated from an area about a hundred kilometers away. Their forests were badly depleted due to the large-scale felling of trees and they were forced to leave. It takes two days of hard labor out in the forest to gather a head load of bamboo which is then woven into a basket and sold in the local market. <laughs> While in the forest, they also manage to collect silk pods that can be exchanged for the occasional treat. Housemaking activities take place in summer when there is no work in the fields. The walls of the houses are made of mud by hand and the roof tiles are made with the help of simple locally designed tools and molds. <laughs> Once formed and dried, they are fired in a pit dug in the ground.
On the inside, gond houses are simple and marked with a bare minimum on possessions. <laughs> Women, by and large, share equal status with the men. The site for a village is selected according to the availability of natural resources, especially the availability of water. A traditional gond well is lined with a hollowed-out tree trunk and water is drawn out with a ladle made out of a dried-out gourd. <laughs> Out in the forest, a pit in a dried-out riverbed is a source of drinking water. With the help of a well-concealed net, the gorns are also able to trap small birds in this pit. <laughs> toddy tapping is very popular among the gorns. The favourite toddy is that of the sago or fish-tailed palm. Unlike the use of mahua liquor, which has more ritual dimensions, the consumption of palm toddy is more for pleasure and is believed to be good against stomach ailments. The Gonds have always been skillful hunters. In earlier times, they were known to hunt tigers, wild buffaloes and wild boars. The village would organize collective hunts where all the male members of the village would go out to hunt together. The spoils of the hunt would then be distributed equally among all the families. The evenings after the hunts would be marked by wild celebrations. This dance, performed by a group of Raj Gorns, depicts the hunting of a buffalo. The buffalo keeps on eluding them and they try different ways, including magic, to trap him, till they finally manage to kill him. This dance is a reminder of mankind's first attempts to tame nature. Similar dances and sports can be seen all over the world, as with the famous bullfights of Spain. <laughs> Mahua tree is the most sacred tree among the Gonds, as it is a source of food, oil and above all, liquor. In March, when the tree blossoms, one can see people heading out early in the morning towards the fields and forests to collect the flowers that drop from the tree. According to legend, Mahua liquor was discovered by Lingo himself and the Gorns serve it at ceremonial occasions. The clan gods demand it, and it is the best way to appease the spirits of the departed. The major share of cash income comes from the collection and sale of tendu leaves. Available for only four weeks in a year, tendu leaves used for rolling beeries fetch a good price. This trade too is controlled by contractors. The contractors dictate the prices and in many areas start forest fires just before the season starts. This is said to increase the yield but it destroys other plants in the forest. In some areas the government has taken over from the contractors and the Gorns get better rates for the leaves they collect. 
In this village, the villagers have formed their own collective. They protect their forest from outsiders and by holding together, manage to negotiate a good price. They also ensure that the trees are not overplucked and destroyed forever. Apart from bamboo and tendu, there are a number of other minor forest produce like tamarind, dhimal and scores of medicinal plants that the Gonds collect and sell in the market. In exchange, they mostly buy plastic goods of daily use and synthetic clothes. So far, the trade is largely disorganized and the urban-based traders tend to dictate the prices often to the disadvantage of the tribal people. Though there have been some efforts to organize this sector known as minor forest produce, careful intervention could result in this becoming another major source of income for tribal people. Elders in Maria society enjoy a favoured position and this respect continues after their death. These immortal spirits of the ancestors continue to play a vital role in everyday affairs of the Maria life. Displeased spirits of the ancestors are believed to cause illness and other calamities such as failed crops. The Maria bury their dead. Gravestones that depict the way a person lived mark the place of burial. In some areas, one can see stones erected in the memory of the departed. Though this megalithic practice is fast disappearing, there is a belief that if the soul of the ancestor is satisfied with the arrangements made for it, then the stone will grow in size. The Gond way of life has seen the most changes in the last couple of decades. With the coming of roads and schools, they get more and more assimilated into the mainstream. Unfortunately, this assimilation happens in ways where they are at a disadvantage and in the pursuit of new ways of livelihood, they lose their distinct identity. of good intentions, government schemes have been unable to stop this trend. They are unable to realize the potential and knowledge of indigenous people. The tribal in the end has lost her means of livelihood and her cultural heritage has lost its vitality. Often, as is the case with these Maria Gonds near Kanker in Bastar, the traditional dance has lost its original purpose and become a mere exotic performance.